The exoplanet loomed beneath our spacecraft, its surface an eerie mosaic of shadows and desolation. Our mission team, aboard the exploration vessel Horizon Seeker, descended cautiously, anticipation tinged with nervousness. I, Dr. Lucas Reed, an astrobiologist, reveled in the prospect of discovery. Upon landing, we scoured the barren landscape. Amidst the arid terrain, I unearthed a mysterious specimen, a microscopic organism, undetectable by our advanced sensors. The excitement coursed through me as I secured the specimen, unaware of the terror it would unleash. Days passed, and an inexplicable unease settled upon us. My crewmates showed signs of distress, agonizing headaches, erratic behavior, and peculiar skin markings. I, too, felt the clasp of something sinister coiling within me. My research revealed the ghastly truth. The specimen was a parasitic life form, rapidly evolving upon contact with organic matter. Nightmares plagued our sleep, vivid and torturous. Whispers drifted through the corridors, alien and unsettling, leaving us on edge. One fateful night, alone in the lab, I observed the organism under the microscope. Its writhing forms seemed to reach out, an unsettling echo rumbling within my mind. I dismissed it as fatigue until I heard the whispers, haunting and spectral. The crew dwindled. Some disappeared without a trace. Others underwent distorted transformations. Their bodies contorted into monstrous visages. The echoes grew louder, resembling a chorus of fragmented memories, fragments of lives long forgotten. I became determined to escape this nightmare. My only hope lay in the ship's transmitter damaged during our descent. Repairing it became my obsession, a lifeline amidst invading madness. As I navigated the dim corridors, the ship seemed to conspire against me. Shadows danced maliciously, and the whispers followed, mocking my resolve. The parasite's influence toyed with reality, bending it to its malevolent will. In the transmitter room, the whispers crescendoed, a symphony of unmelodic echoes. With shaky hands, I initiated the repairs, the dread noticeable as the tendrils of the parasite coiled around my mind. Just as the transmitter crackled to life, emitting a distress signal into the void, the parasite manifested before me, a deformed blend of shifting forms echoing the horrors of its victims. Its whispers bore into my psyche, dredging up my deepest fears. The distress signal echoed across the cosmos, disrupting the parasite's hold. It writhed in agony, contorting and fading into oblivion. Rescue arrived, finding me the sole survivor, but the echoes of the exoplanet lingered. They whispered of horrors witnessed, nightmares lived, and a terror that transcended the boundaries of space and time. A haunting reminder of the parasitic nightmare that forever stained our souls. After the catastrophic downfall of Station Prometheus, fragments containing the organism crash-landed in various remote locations around Earth. The organism, resilient and adaptable, began its silent assimilation of the planet's biosphere. Initially infecting wildlife, it caused bizarre mutations and aggressive behavior in the infected animals, which did not go unnoticed by the local populations. As word of these strange occurrences started to spread, Scientific teams dispatched to investigate found themselves unwittingly serving as new hosts. The organism's influence was subtle, manipulating thoughts and actions without arousing the suspicion of those around the infected. It used its hosts to travel, to spread, like spores carried by the wind. Sporadic news reports of unusual behavior and violent incidents began to surface from all over the globe. Authorities treated these as isolated cases, unable to see the pattern emerging. It was only when key figures in power started exhibiting uncharacteristic behavior that a sense of unease began to permeate national governments and scientific communities. As the world stood on the precipice of chaos, a small group of individuals, some who had survived the Prometheus incident, others who had begun connecting the dots independently, started working together. They were from all walks of life. Scientists, soldiers, journalists, 
and citizens who had witnessed too much. This clandestine network sought to understand and find a way to counteract the organism, using guerrilla tactics to gather information and spread awareness. Meanwhile, the organism continued to evolve and adapt. Now, not just content with animals and humans, it began altering the very environment, creating areas inhospitable to uninfected life, but ideal for its purposes. These zones grew like blight across the land, ecological dead zones teeming with mutated flora and fauna. As tensions and paranoia escalated worldwide, the group made a startling discovery. The organism wasn't just spreading, it was preparing. For what? They didn't know. But the unmistakable sense of impending calamity drove them to desperate measures. The story ends with the world in a precarious balance. On one side, the encroaching darkness of the organism's influence. On the other, a flickering light of resistance. The fate of humanity hangs in the balance. The outcome uncertain as both sides brace for what is to come. As a result of the outbreak, your city or entire region may be endangered by a lethal agent. If conditions at your location make this a possibility, you need to consider staying in place until the threat has subsided or blown over.